Hello, and welcome to an EDB special report on the Quadlunsat mission to the moon. This mission was meant to set four communication satellites in orbit around the moon in order to facilitate future lunar missions. The mission was launched in the early morning of Thursday, January 15th, and two hours and 11 minutes after it reached orbit, it began its translunar injection burn using the SS engine. You can see a simulated view here of the four satellites attached to the quad coupler and attached to their lunar transfer stage, the SS engine there, uh, lighting over western Africa and on into the Indian Ocean past Madagascar. And so we see it here, engine lit in the simulated view. You'll note the numerous antennae that are open. Uh, each of the satellites has an antenna that is to be directed at Earth and also another antenna that is meant to communicate with the other satellites around the moon. And at the moment uh, you see three of the satellite uh, three of the antenna dishes that are meant to communicate with Earth open and those are actually each directed at a different satellite in orbit to ensure communications throughout the translunar injection. Here we see the craft uh, bridging the strait between Africa and Madagascar. The lunar transfer stage has just a little bit more fuel than is necessary to make the transfer. What will happen is after it makes the transfer and gets the craft into lunar SOI, two of the satellites, each of the satellites has 1000 meters per second worth of delta V as uh, we see here the SS engine is going to complete its burn. Each of the satellites has a thousand meters per second of delta V and two of the satellites will detach from the, the coupling bed first and each make their own independent orbit. One on the initial side before crossing over into uh, signal loss territory and then the second one after passing signal loss territory for the other two satellites, the remaining fuel in the transfer stage will boost its orbit higher and so initially it will be at 2000 kilometers and then it will boost higher to around 6000 kilometers and then separate those two. Okay, we see here the burn successful, the, the craft continued on its way to the moon and all was looking good so far in the mission at this point. The Quadlunsat mission had uh, no significant problems on its way to the moon either. We will catch up with it as it approaches Lunar SOI. Here we see a simulated view of the approach to the moon. Quadlunsat still very much in order. Once in Lunar SOI, the first satellite separated and it had some issues with rotation as it separated from the craft, but it quickly got itself uh, oriented properly. It had no trouble deploying its solar panels and communication was good. The second satellite was also deployed as planned. Again, uh, no problem with uh, communications and eventually it too would uh, deploy its solar panels and up to this point the mission looked to be going well. So these two satellites uh, both aim to have a periapsis of 2000 kilometers on the far side of the moon from the earth and then have a apoapsis higher than that to approximately 6000 to 7000 kilometers on the side closer to the earth. With that done, the transfer stage attempted to make its boost to a higher orbit to release the next few satellites, but ended up having an imbalance because it had the satellites on the same side. And uh, it took a little bit of time to get it proper. It only had a little bit of fuel left and so was not able to run the RCS ports in order to write itself. It only needed to make a tiny little burst 
in order to complete its duty. However, with that done, Mission Control lost communication with the first two satellites that were released. The EDB doesn't know what happened exactly, but high power telescopes show not the satellites, but pure cylinders of some sort. And it's not entirely clear what happened to the satellites that were supposed to be in those locations, but uh, clearly something has occurred that wiped out their communication ability and power. The remaining two satellites were released as planned, but now the situation was quite grim and uncertain. The third satellite and fourth satellite both were able to uh, rem remain in communication and deploy their solar panels. There was no way to just leave the satellites on the transfer stage, of course, because it would simply be flung into interplanetary space. Uh, they would not be able to get into orbit around the moon without activating their own engines and using their own fuel. So they had to be separated from the transfer stage. And unfortunately, soon after that, both the third satellite and fourth satellite also suffered the same fate as the first two. And so at this point, the Kwalunsat mission is uh, ruled a failure and with no uh, clear indication of what the cause of this was, the Kerbals uh, who work in the EDB are, are tossing around the word Kraken, of course, and uh, they are shades of the Hyperion shuttle mystery, which also still has not been resolved. It's unclear what uh, this means for the EDB going forward, uh, but for now, uh, it is simply a tragedy and we will have to see. With that, uh, thank you for watching this coverage of the Kwanlun Sat mission, and this is the EDB signing off.